Hello and welcome to Latex Weekly episode 13th October 2021. Latex Weekly is brought to you by Latex, your protection from tech ignorance. My name is Sean. This week's news, Microsoft commits to right to repair. This came after a non-profit shareholder advocacy group, As You So. The name of the group is called As You So, not As You Sow filed a shareholder resolution asking Microsoft to look into the potential impact of making their hardware easier to repair. In return for withdrawing the resolution, Microsoft agreed to conduct a study on it. Multiple organizations, including As You So and iFitIt, no, sorry, iFixit, uh, called this commitment, quote, very encouraging and, quote, a huge landmark move for Microsoft. This is more than what other tech giants have done when it comes to the right to repair. The right to repair is actually a movement that regulators have been trying to enforce following recent years of tech companies continually making it harder for third-party repair companies to fix their devices. This caused a lot of monopoly over repairing of the devices and some devices being completely unable to repair at all, both of which Apple have been infamously famous, uh, infamous for creating. The right to repair isn't only about giving the power of repairing devices to third-party companies, but also extending the lifetime of hardware, which ultimately leads to the reduction of e-waste. A lot of tech companies nowadays, uh, they don't really care about repairing it. They are forcing people to, um, like, you know, like, uh, keep buying new devices so they can keep making money and keep pushing the technological, uh, technolo- te- technological, technological, thresholds, which has been creating a lot of e-waste in the past decade or so. Over the years, Microsoft Surface devices have seen gradual increase in repairability. The most recent line of Surface Pro 8 will spot SSD storage that can easily be removed and replaced. All you have to do is just to flip a switch that pops up a cap, you can replace the SSD and you're done. So that is a step to making it a lot more repairable and hopefully Microsoft devices Microsoft hardware can make more parts replaceable as well so that their devices can actually last longer. And one of the things that makes Microsoft Surface devices more repairable uh, is also the fact that they have been using the same chassis for a long time. And because they use the same chassis for a long time, there is no need to keep upgrading to a new and better looking one. And people can actually just, uh, you know, take take it apart, change the parts that they can and they can keep using their existing devices for a longer time. That's good. We have to start looking into these things because we cannot continue to keep buying devices and throwing them away, um, throwing them, throwing completely usable devices away just because uh, companies like Apple upgrade, make like software upgrades that, uh, that has this planned obsolescence to force us to keep buying new devices, and that's not good for the world. Samsung publishes stress tests on foldable phones. Samsung has recently posted videos on its website showing four separate stress tests on their foldable devices. Uh, One has devices exposed to different climates to make sure they still work. Another one tests the phones being submerged in water. The third tests the performance of its S Pens on both the Z Fold and Z Flip. While the final one, Uh, is where the phones are folded over and over again to test the folding screen's durability. There were a few reported problems on screens cracking right at the hinge, which Samsung did not test. A report by 9to5Google revealed that one of the journalists' Z Flip 3 has a cracked glass right at the hinge, even with minimal use. Uh, That journalist said that there was no exposure to heat or cold, and he did not recently drop his device. The biggest problem with Samsung's foldable device or any kinds of foldable screen will always be its durability. Durability. Folding something will most definitely weaken its structure regardless of what that structure is. So, uh, but for those who are interested, you can actually go check out the the website and you can have a look at it. But at the end of the day, um, people buy Z Flips and Z Folds not because of its intense durability even if phones are very phone hardwares are very durable these days we always have this perception that the phone itself will not last us over two to three years so as long as the durability can last that two to three years then that's an entire lifetime for the device for us but at least we want to make it able to last that two to three years and it's a bit harder for 
such a high tech screen, right? Foldable screens um, that I guess Samsung needs to go to the extra, extra mile to convince people that what they built is actually uh, worth it, worth buying. Google may bundle Google Pass with Pixel devices. Google Pass will be a subscription bundle similar to Apple One, where it includes Google One, Apple Pass, uh, YouTube Music, or YouTube Premium, and extended warranty to the Pixel device. It will most likely only be available to the US market, which is, to be honest, Google's biggest problem. The company makes amazing products, both hardware and software. The problem lies in its supply chain. I mean, they can roll out any amazing thing in the world. But at the end of the day, people all over the world would rather move to Apple ecosystem because the services are similar and equal across the world. Google keeps introducing new subscriptions and closing them down because they couldn't find out why they can't sell as many signups as Apple. The fact is just they're not selling to a, a large enough market. So yeah, Google, you can introduce whatever you want. At the end of the day, if you don't supply it to a large enough market, you will not see uh, sustainability or growth in that industry that you're trying to get into. So food for thought. You may not need Hey Google to interact with your phone. Google says they will remove the need to use the Hey Google trigger before interacting with your devices for some actions. They include setting alarms and timers, sending broadcasts, responding to calls, asking the, timer, the time and weather, turning lights on and off, controlling volume, skipping tracks, setting reminders, and creating family notes. There is a catch, however. Disabling the trigger word may make it easier for your device to accidentally catch up on other people's responses or even catch your response without your intention. Imagine if you are telling your friend to answer something so the word answer comes out just when a call comes in and you accidentally pick up a call. So uh, I guess saying the word, hey, Google, does not, it's, it's not that much of an of a pain, right? Uh, uh, except for the fact that you have to say the word Google all the time. It'd be nicer if they call it by a different name, but um, Google is a little bit of a narcissist that way. So yeah, this function will come with Android 12 release. So if you guys are interested, yeah, look forward to it. AirPod Pro's conversation boost is here. During the, the last WWDC, Apple showed off a new ability for AirPods Pro, where a function known as Conversation Boost can amplify the hearing of conversations in front of you when turned on. It's part of an accessibility function for people with difficulty hearing. From the outset, it seems like an interesting function that helps some people. But upon usage, I personally find that it annoys me more than it helps me. The AirPods start picking up a lot of stray and high-pitched sounds from all over, which after a while started giving me a headache. Um, it didn't really boost conversations that much either. So I guess perhaps it's just a preliminary kink that would be ironed out eventually. Second thing is um, I think there is a market for this. There are people with difficulty hearing would want to buy AirPods Pro because they like to listen to music and at the same time also would like to have their AirPods double as um, hearing aids. But... They, ha they, they don't have as much battery life as the hearing aids. So they will probably need to have hearing aids as backup anyway, which, I don't know, it feels a lot like a novelty thing that they want to make themselves useful to, to more groups of people by boosting the mic capability. But in the end, it feels like a half-hearted thing. I, I don't know. I mean, it's still very early. Um, not my kind of thing, but some people may find it useful. So we'll have to see. In any case, uh, Latex, this is all for Latex Weekly this week. Latex Weekly is available on Anchor FM, Overcast, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Radio Public and more. Our full videos are available on YouTube and I post bits and clips on Instagram and Facebook. If you like Latex Weekly, it would really help if you could rate and review it on the podcast feed of your choice so more can discover it. Latex Weekly is looking for a regular co-host to bring more depth to the show. If you're interested, simply drop me an email at seanbqt, that is S-H-A-W-N, B for Bangkok, Q for Queensland, T for Thailand, at hotmail.com. That is all for social, so social media. Latex Weekly episode 13th October 2021. My name is Sean. See you next week. Stay safe. Bye-bye.